We started off the programme with an air, basically a tune by Uccellini. Like all the composers you will hear today, he was a violinist as well as a composer, and he knew how to make the most of his instrument. The next piece by another Italian called Pandolfi is much calmer. We start out very quietly with Matt playing on his own. Listen out for the pattern. I then join him and the music builds and builds. Try to listen out for what makes the music grow and then come back into almost nothing. And look out as I finally have to start off moving up the fingerboard. In this concert, I'm playing a violin which might look very much like what you would normally see in concert. However, if you look closer, there are a few differences. This instrument is old and is set up like one from the times of the pieces we are playing, the 1600s. I have no chin rest or shoulder rest, and this makes the instrument lighter, actually. And the bits like the bridge and fingerboard are also slightly different to what you would normally see. And then look at the bow. This is actually a copy of a bow which you can find in a museum in Oxford. And it has amazing lift with this tip. It means it can play very delicately, but I can also play really vigorously at the heel. And it weighs the same as a mass bar, 48 grams. <laughs> Thank you. 
piece, you heard me playing the guitar, and you'll see the instrument again in the last piece that we play. But it looks and sounds a bit different from the guitar we know today. How is it different? Well, it's, it's the design of a guitar from the 17th century. It's smaller, it has a slightly rounded back, and the strings are doubled up, so that when I press a finger down, I cover two strings at once. The sound hole is also filled in with decoration. And this guitar is the ancestor of today's guitar, and we can recognise that. But, what is this instrument that I've just played? This was also played throughout the 17th century, and it went by two names. The chitarroni, which translates roughly as big guitar, or the theorbo. And although I play it more or less like a guitar, what's special about this instrument? What makes it unique? Well, it's got 14 strings, seven that I press down and play like a guitar, and seven particularly long ones that are attached to an extra set of pegs. And these notes cover a, a low sort of double bass range. I play these low strings with my right hand thumb, but I can't alter them during a piece, so I have to retune them in between pieces in different keys. In the next piece by the Italian composer called Fontana, you'll hear several sections, and each is a different mood. We don't stop in between each part. Instead, one section blends or changes into another, a bit like a, our mood can change during the day. You can tell by listening where one section or mood ends and another begins. Also listen for the first main idea in the piece that's heard in the violin part and then is imitated by the theorba.
Before I switch back to the guitar, I'll play one more piece on the Theorbo with Anne-Marie by an Austrian composer called Heinrich Bieber. In the music in this concert, all the composers write more notes on the page for the violin than for the Theorbo or guitar. In this next piece by Bieber, for example, I'm just given a single repeated chord in the introduction, and then a four chord pattern in the main portion, which goes bum, 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 and then two chords in the final section. And Marie, on the other hand, has hundreds of notes and lots of them fast and virtuosic. So why only a few notes for me and so many for the violin? Well, there are pieces where the theorbo gets lots of notes, uh, but Heinrich Bieber and the other composers in this concert love playing the violin and com composing specifically for the violin was innovative at that time. They were keen to demonstrate what the instrument could do, playing high up the neck, playing a flurry of fast notes, playing two or three note chords, and a good way to do this is to have a short pattern played over and over again by another instrument. This is what's called a ground bass that you've been hearing throughout this concert. And hear a variety of things played over the top. So even though I only see a few written notes on the page, everyone knew it was important to improvise music to fit with those written notes by adding chords, arpeggios and linking passages. So, as well as enjoying the variety of written out violin music, keep in mind the subtle variety occurring in the theorbo part.
The final piece on the programme is a saraband by Matteis. Matteis was the first of many Italian violinists to move to London to seek his fortune. And while it took a while, he succeeded in the end and was considered the master of the instrument. He was famous for playing fast, like you just saw in the previous piece, going up the fingerboard and exploring the instrument. The piece is a saraband, an old Spanish dance, so try and listen out and see what makes this piece a dance.
Thank you.